This is a wild capture beer I'm trying to make. I collected some extra water on a brew day and I put it outside for 24 hours, brought it in, and let it ferment. It's been about a month now. Let's go back to the clips of me collecting some of that water and all that stuff and we'll, we'll come back here in a second. So I have a half a gallon uh, I don't know what to do with. Um, I hate to see it to go to waste. I just, it bothers me. I think I might just fill a growler up and throw it out in the backyard and capture more wild yeast. I did get this to a boil. So it is pasteurized. Now it's been sitting very, very hot for a little bit here now. I got down to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and transferred into a one gallon jug right now. I did fail to say you need to get the pH to 4.5 first. That will inhibit wild bacteria from getting in. I don't want the bad stuff, I want the good stuff. Cover the cheesecloth, put it by a tree out back, call it a day. All right, we shall see. We shall see what this did. It's really warm. Unfortunately, it's in the sun. I'm gonna put an airlock on it. I'll put this in my chest freezer that's at like 64 degrees Fahrenheit now and uh, see if there's activity in the next day or two. Welcome back. Let's see what we got here. I haven't looked inside yet. This airlock's almost out. I didn't check it like a dum-dum. So this could be completely oxidized. It's a little nail polishy. Uh, let's go start it up anyway and see what happens. So I got it the pH to 4.4. Uh, so that is so to prevent anything else wild from getting into this. I'm going to then put it into another growler. This is about a half gallon. So, you know, it'll go pretty full onto this to keep the oxygen out. I'll take a little look after about two weeks and see if there's any mold growing on here. And if there's not, I'll grow it up into a one gallon uh, jug and use that as my like lambic sort of harvested thing I'm have going on here. Hopefully the weird phenol smell and the weird um, medicinal thing going on won't transfer into the next phase of this. We'll see. Let's decant it off the top of this. Oh, chunky yeast. Or bacteria. So yeah, I'm gonna let this go. I'm not gonna put um, CO2 into this. I'm gonna just let it do its thing. Let it grow in case it needs some oxygen. And uh, yeah, check back on it in probably three weeks or so. Uh, I have a date on here, 3-3-18, that's when I pitched this, today. So yeah, see you sometime in the future. I can't see that, but there's like a weird looking yeast or mold or something in the bottom of this. I don't think it's mold, but that was a weird looking yeast. So I was going to just make a, a batch, a one gallon batch for this, but I think I tasted it first. It is March 25th today. This says 3318 on it. You guys have been watching the, the clips until now. So you know what's going on. Let's see what this tastes like. There's no mold on top, which is a good sign. Smells good. It's interesting. This happened the last time I tried to make some sours where it has like a Saison sort of thing going on. Um, I'm not getting any lactic acid on this. Maybe a tiny bit. Let's see if I can get a pH reading on it. 3.9. There might not be much on this as far as lactobacillus goes. That's close to the range of beer, a hair lower. Yeah, let's let's uh, do a one gallon batch right now and uh, let's see what this does. quarter of this into here. I know you just saw all this footage, but why I mashed at 160 degrees Fahrenheit was to get more dextrins into this. This is a long souring process, I imagine. 
So I need some of those long dextrins to kind of help with the, any bacteria that's in there to chew it over the course of years. Also helps the body because this will be really dry. I'm also, uh, I put no hops into this. Um, I don't want the alpha acids um, in, affecting lactobacillus, or IBUs I should say. Anything above 10 you're gonna get into problems where the lactobacillus won't do its thing. So if it is lactobacillus into this, I wanna see if it does anything. This ended up being about 1048 on the gravity, a little shy of what I wanted. Uh, and if nothing happens in, in like a month and a half, as far as like pH drop below four, I might just bottle it and just, you know, maybe I captured the, the, some dominant regular sac strain and call it a day. If I start seeing a pellicle within a month, then I'll let it go. So let's clip to the next uh, portion of this, whether it's a month or six months from now or three months from now or whenever. This is it. The beer has been going for a while. This weird pellicle that forms could be mold. It looks like pellicle mostly. Take a peek, I'll show you what it looks like. I hate taking gravity readings along the way too much, especially when I'm not filled all the way to the top of the headspace. I don't want to introduce oxygen into this. The pellicle helps that from happening. I have to break the pellicle though, because I want to take a gravity reading. I might even take a pH reading as well. So that's down there. This might be ready to bottle. Let's take a little bit of a, uh, of a taste here, a little bit of a whiff. It's very interesting. It's very thin. It hasn't carbonated, obviously. Let's take a pH reading, shall we? Showing 3.8, 3.7. 3.8, 3 3.7. It's pretty good. I mean, it could be a hair sour, I guess, but for a lambic style, that's about probably right. Um, I never found them to be like viciously acidic, the authentic ones at least. I could blend this, I guess, with something more acidic, but I like the idea of just straight up wild captured yeast, um, just unadulterated. So uh, I think I'm gonna bottle this puppy right now. Okay, bottled, it is done. And just so you guys know, I bottled with uh, re with rehydrated yeast, US05. I prefer champagne yeast. I did 0.25 grams for my one gallon batch. One gram per five gallons is normal. This needs something else because it was at zero in gravity or really close to it. So I'm gonna let these condition for about three or four weeks um, and then uh, do a tasting. See you then. Here we are, six months in the making, made it to a tasting. I thought this would be longer to be honest, but it was done when it was done. And I didn't think it was gonna go up much past zero <laughs> in gravity. Oh, I got a bad opener here. God. I was hoping this would carbonate. It needs more time. Ah, oh, man, I let it go. Three weeks, too. I just think of being at zero, it just wasn't quite there yet for carbonation. But it's it's there a little bit. Cool color, though. All right. Let's dive right in. The nose off the smell is pretty cool. It's like very lambic. A little bit of rubber sort of thing going on. But it's very, very minor. I'd say it's more Britannomyces than it is like rubber or bad Britannomyces, which can throw off that like heavy rubber smoke sort of thing. Um, or usually like a full on wild contamination. I've had that before in, one, in uh, some older beer where I tried to make a clean beer and open it up and it was just like, ugh, all rubbery. That's oh, pretty good. I'm getting a little fruit too. A little pineapple. Nice grain smell to it, but not, not that THP, tetrahydropyridine, which can be that Cheerio thing. Uh, which comes from oxidation, so I think I kept this pretty well contained in that regard. I only took on gravity reading, and I bottled it. <laughs> that was right at the end, as you guys saw. Sort of lemony, too. I'm getting a lemon smell out of it. It's really nice, really cool, funky, sort of lambic-y sort of thing. It's cool. The taste is nice. It's like, not that acidic. Mm. Tart, but not too tart. So it's well-rounded. Um... As you guys saw, the pH is at 3.8 or 7, 3.7, somewhere around there. So it wasn't too rippingly acidic. Hmm. Really well balanced, a little bit of funk, a little bit of acidity, complex sort of fruit thing going on. It's like pineapple mostly, and a little bit of guava or like melon or something like that. More so in the taste. It's extremely pleasant, actually. Uh, definitely a, a, a winner. I can't believe that it's turned out this good without blending. This is my, I think, fifth attempt at this. 
or fourth, which I didn't put on my blog because I, I maybe removed them. They might even still be there a couple years old and I just didn't take them out. But I've dumped all the rest. I couldn't even blend any of them. They, they either turned vinegary or just rubbery and just, just or was way too harsh in, in certain off flavors. I definitely want to try and reuse this, whatever's in here, because it's definitely reusable. Um, and the fact that it was done in six months is a great sign. I might be able to rip something out in, you know, around the same time. I, I might try a hoppy beer with it and see how much of a sack strain got in there and see if I can do 100% fermentation with that and, you know, maybe some sort of weird wild I yeast capture IPA or something. So yeah, um, stay tuned for more experiments with this and more experiments with wild yeast capture in general. Uh, and go out there and try it yourself, guys. Go to Milk the Funk, they have amazing resources on this. They have a whole thing about wild capture sours, that's what I would base stuff, this off of. Michael Tonsmeyer has great resources too on that. Um, so there's various different ways too. We can you know, put capture from fruit and things like that. You know, or leave it out like I did, or do a cool ship, which is what the Belgian people are doing. Um, and some American breweries, you know, leaving the shallow vat out, you know, overnight, whatever's in there gets in there, and yeah, that's their beer. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and stay tuned for more. Thank you.